What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to talk about the next Marvel Champions Hero Pack. I was getting a little bit sad, ladies and gentlemen. I, were, I was starting to think that it was going to just take too long. You know, where, where was the next Hero Pack? Well, the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, it's coming. It's Nova. And it looks pretty gosh darn good. Now, Nova is aggression coming out of the box, and we start off with the alter ego of Sam Alexander. Recovery of 3, hand size of 6, hit points of 10, all fairly standard. But there is an alter ego action whereby you spend 1 resource of any type, and you search your deck and discard pile for Supernova Helmet, and add it to your hand. But if instead of paying for it with any type, you actually paid for it with an any type resource, the star, you get to put it into play instead, which is clearly a brilliant thing. Now, the card itself is a one cost upgrade, so fine, you're only saving one cost here, but still, you're saving one cost, which is nice. Supernova Helmet, Nova gains the aerial traits, and it's got a resource skill that lets you exhaust it to generate an any type resource. Bearing in mind we've already seen it on the Alter Ego and we've only just got rolling here. There are going to be other cards which really rely on you spending any type resources. And if you can spend any type resources with your helmet, that is going to make your job much, much easier. Wild resources are what they refer to it as in the article. I don't know if I've ever called them that. It's probably the official name. Let's go with wild resources. But the fact that you can, as they say in the reveal article, consistently generate them, that's a really, really, really good thing. I should mention Nova is described as a powerful burst character with lots of low-cost events. Speaking of Nova, we've got attack of 1, thwart of 1, defense of 2. That's low. 2-2-2 two, two, two is the average, 1-1-2 one, one, is honestly kind of bad. You stay at the same 10 hit points and get down to a hand size of 5, which we expect, but these are pretty bad stats on Nova. But it's got a response after you use one of Nova's basic powers, you get to ready Supernova Helmet. So you use Supernova Helmet to generate a wild resource, yay! Then you attack or thwart or defend with Nova, then you ready it, and you can generate another wild resource later on down the line. And I could start getting on board with this. Speaking of these wild resources, how about Lightspeed Flight? A two cost event that doubles the number of wild resources generated while paying for this card. I.e. if you use a wild resource to pay for Lightspeed Flight, it is a one cost event. Which is clearly good. It's then got a hero action thwart, which removes free threat from a scheme, which free threat for essentially one cost is good. And yes, there is going to be a deck building challenge here to see who can make the most functional deck with Nova while including as many wild resources as possible. We can also look at Potshot, a two cost event. But if you pay for it with a wild resource, it's only a one cost event, and this deals four damage to an enemy. And like I just said with a thwarting a second ago, if you're dealing four damage for one wild resource, that's a bit nuts. And this is kind of the hook of Nova here. If you can keep using these wild resources, and yeah, that helmet definitely helps, then what we've got here is a character that is doing a lot super cheap. Now, we do need a signature ally here. We've got Miss Marvel, a free cost ally with free health. One thwart, one attack, taking one consequential damage for each. But after you play an event, you may exhaust Miss Marvel, deal one damage to her, and return that event to your hand. So basically, instead of thwarting or attacking for one, exhausting and taking a damage, you get to put an event back into your hand. But if you are using a bunch of wild resources here, and you've got these really good events like we just saw with Pot Shot for damage, or Lightspeed Flight for thwarting, Miss Marvel can let you reuse them. I don't really like Miss Marvel as an ally for attacking or thwarting. I'm sorry, she doesn't have two attack or thwart while taking one damage, which is the minimum I'm generally looking for from an ally if I'm going to be attacking or thwarting. It needs to be two taking one damage back. But if you're telling me that I can keep reusing events while I go, yeah, I'm kind of all right with that. That kind of seems fun to me. We've then got the one cost event Unleash Nova Force, 
max once per round. And that is especially important here because remember, Miss Marvel can get it back. So broken cards like this in Nova need to be once per round. It's got a hero action until the end of the round. Each time Nova defeats an enemy or removes the last threat from a scheme, ready Nova and draw one card. This is potentially full on broken. Because if you've got lots of little minions, I mean, let's say you're against something like Ultron with all of his drones. Well, defeat a drone, ready, draw a card. Attack, defeat a drone, because they've only got one health normally. And then you get to ready and draw a card. And then maybe there's some side schemes you can finish off. You see where I'm going with this? You could potentially have many, many uses and draw a huge amount of cards. Although, do remember that when you run out of hero deck, you do get an encounter card. So, that might be something you genuinely have to worry about here. But that's, if you get this early enough, this is going to be super consistent. It obviously has to be max once per round or else it's getting a bit ridiculous. Connection to the world mind is a resource. Yes, it's a wild resource. Obviously, you've been paying attention, I assume. You know that's what we're looking for. And it does not count towards your hand size. So, whereas at the end of the round, you would generally only be able to have, say, six cards in hand or five, depending on which form you were in, this could be an extra card, which is clearly nuts. And it's a wild resource, which we love. Now, moving over to look at some aggression cards, we've got the Locust, a two cost ally, one thwart taking two damage. No. One attack taking one damage. I'm not loving this. You can also only play it if your identity has a champion trait, so boo. But after the Locust enters play, you may add an aggression red event from your discard pile to your hand. And that's why we play the Locust. Not unlike we saw with Miss Marvel a moment ago, the stats here are bad. It is a cheap ally that doesn't do very much. When one attack taking a consequential damage is the best you can offer, that's bad. However, I'm getting a red event from my discard bar back to my hand, ready to use and put my strategy into play next time. Yeah, sounds good to me. Although there is a strong argument that Miss Marvel is going to be better for getting those events back. Pitchback is a one cost event that can only be played if your hero has the aerial trait. And as a hero response attack, after your hero attacks, deal four damage to an enemy. Yeah, I like that. One cost, four damage. We saw it earlier, but that's still pretty cool. One by one is a one cost event. Hero action, attack, deal two damage to an enemy. If this attack defeats that enemy, deal two damage to an enemy. So again, if you've got lots of weak minions or almost KO'd minions on the board, this is going to be a very, very nice aggression card. Fluid Motion is a one-cost upgrade. Hero response after you play an attack event. Exhaust this card, and your hero gets plus one attack until the end of the phase. Now, to be fair, it still only puts you up to two attack, which is average. It's not great. But a one-cost upgrade, and if you keep playing attack events, you end up with two attack every turn. Yeah, I'll take that. Especially because, you know, the basic attack is not really what Nova's got going on here. Now, we also have a basic resource, Everyday Hero. While your identity has the civilian trait, this card can be spent for any player and gains a text, Response. After you spend this card for a player, heal one damage for that player's identity. Plus, you've got a wild resource going on as well. This sounds pretty good to me. And then we got No Quarter, a two-cost event. Must use a physical resource. And as a hero action attack, deal 4 damage to an enemy. For each point of excess damage dealt to that enemy by this attack, i.e. if it's got 2 health and you deal 4, then you've dealt 2 points of excess, discard the top card of your deck, and add each aggression card discarded this way to your hand. So a little bit risky, and you are discarding cards from your deck, which can be bad, but this can also act as draw power, which is pretty good. Now, there is a big change in this particular hero pack. Now, we've not been told about the Nemesis minion. I assume there is a Nemesis minion, though, and again, correct me if I'm wrong here, I don't believe they've announced it. But it's the first hero pack that comes with a bonus modular encounter set, this time featuring Armadillo. 
crunchy on the outside, smooth on the inside. And what we've got here is a minion with one scheme, two attack, eight health, comes in with toughness, and Armadillo can have any number of tough status cards. Remember, generally the enemies are having one at a time, so if they would get a tough, but they've already got one, they don't get one. Not the case of Armadillo. He be stacking, ladies and gentlemen. He be stacking. And that can be really bad and hard to actually get him down. And after Armadillo activates against you, give him a tough status card. So it's going to be a hyper annoying minion, 8 health, and potentially multiple tough status cards. You're going to need to find a turn where you can kind of ping off the tough status cards, or, you know, try and keep them under control for a couple of turns, and then have one big swing, or else you're going to keep running into tough cards over and over, and that's going to be annoying. You've then got Rollin' Rollin', an attachment that gives plus 2 attack, and you attach it to Armadillo, and if Armadillo is not in play, you search the encounter deck and discard pile for Armadillo and put him into play engaged with you and with this attached to him. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You get rid of Armadillo, but then this comes out and Armadillo comes right back. While Armadillo incidentally has a tough status card, which is going to be basically always... Characters cannot defend against his attacks. The combination of these two cards seems really harsh. Armadillo seems like a super tough minion, but I know a lot of people want uh, more challenge for some of the characters. Not Galaxy's Most Wanted. But for some of them, an Armadillo I really think fits here. We've also got a Treachery Tough It Out. Would you believe it? It gives Armadillo and the villain a tough status card. And if one or fewer tough status cards were given this way... This card gains Surge, i.e. if Armadillo's not out and you just give the villain a tough status card, it also gains Surge, which is kind of annoying because it's doing an annoying thing, giving a tough card, and also gaining Surge. That's annoying, ladies and gentlemen. That's annoying. Armadillo is just an extra encounter set, which is popped in there just to be put into anywhere. It's not necessarily for playing with Nova, though obviously you can. It's a bonus encounter set. I really hope that this is now a new thing, that you get a new bonus modular encounter set in every hero pack. And also, if they can keep doing more obscure villains like Armadillo, I'm going to be so happy. It's a deep cut villain, which is included as an extra encounter set just in the hero pack. I'm in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm in. But I want to know if you're in. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Marvel Champions and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourself till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.